It's p.m. at 5 p.m. This is William Hardcastle and Derek Cooper with the programme that sums up the day and your evening starts here. And that's all from p.m. until 5 p.m. tomorrow. It's p.m. at 5 p.m. First in today's p.m., an appeal from the Right Supremo, Mr. Dennis Howe. I would like to emphasise very much that uh, whilst we in the government are giving a lead and industry is doing all that it can and the water industry, at the end of the day in this crisis situation it does come down to every single person in their own household to help. That was Mr Dennis Howell, the right overlord appointed by the government today, appealing to the nation to save water. We'll have an interview with him in just a moment. And among today's other PM reports... The Rhodesian government challenges the United Nations to appoint a commission to look into the Mozambique massacre. The finest bird reserve in Europe, the Farne Islands off the coast of Northumberland, is endangered from erosion caused by the drought. And a book out this week tells drug addicts how they can help themselves. That tune's the work of Paddy Kingsland, one of the composers at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, the source of a great many of the electronic music and effects that you hear on BBC radio and television programmes. Five o'clock. P.M. Robert Williams and Susanna Simons. And in PM, in the next 50 minutes, all the news of the day. We'll also be hearing from a wildlife photographer who came face to face with a deadly black mamba. The noted historian Sir Arthur Bryant says the problems of the country today are very like those facing Elizabeth I when she came to the throne. And what the newspaper editors have decided to do about their treatment of Lady Diana Spencer. But first, the news from Susan Denny. Robert Williams and Janet Cohen. And in the next 50 minutes, the main news of the day. And we discuss last night's controversial ATV film, Death of a Princess, which is threatening relations between Saudi Arabia and Britain. We talk to the former royal nanny who knew the princess who was executed for adultery and to a former Labour minister who says he's outraged at the way the life of Saudi women was portrayed in the film. Don't forget the main news here on Radio 4 at 6 o'clock, but that's it from us. Today's producer was Jeff Cohen, the editors Jenny Abramsky and Carol Lacey. This is Robert Williams. And Janet Cohen. And that's all from PM until 5 p.m. tomorrow. This is Peter Ralph and Robert Williams. 5 o'clock. PM. Singleton and Robert Williams. And in today's PM, our bank interest rates about to go up. Yes, probably, says a city expert. Robert Williams and Liz Donnelly. In PM tonight, the latest news on the search for the stolen racehorse, Shergar. The Vice President of the United States has his first meetings in London, and why an impatient theatre company is asking its audiences to pay for their tickets and then pay a bit more too. It's PM at 5 PM with Hugh Sykes and Libby Forbert. Tonight, President Bush offers to cut US chemical weapon stockpiles by 80%. What does his new offer mean? Mrs. Thatcher pledges we'll hunt down the deal bombers. The private security guards route takes a new turn. And why your country needs you if you're young, fit and female. Whoever you are, good evening. The news summary is read by Brian Perkins. It's PM at 5 PM with Jeremy Vine and Chris Lowe. Tonight, she's not capable of hurting anyone, say the family of the nurse accused of murder in Saudi. Police search traveller camps for the streetwise nine year old missing for more than a week. And why monocled arrogance is the ideal role model. 
for a troubled youth. Well, that's it from us. Today's editor was Margaret Beauty, the producer Hugh Levinson. This is Charlie Lee Potter. And Chris Lowe, one audition too far. That's it in the next news on Radio 4 at 6 o'clock. Uh, we'll be back at 5 o'clock tomorrow. We're ending a little early for reasons which will shortly become apparent. Bye. Well, that's it from us. Today's editors were Chris Burkett and Karen Munger, the producer Engineering. This is Libby Forbert. And Bill Frost. And that's all from PM until 5 PM on Monday. As we came on air yesterday, news was coming through of the terror attack in Barcelona. The hunt continues for one of the perpetrators. We'll bring you the latest in the investigation with our correspondent, Gavin Lee. 24 hours on from Spain's biggest terror attack in a decade, police here in Barcelona believe they're starting to close in on the terror network behind it. And today is the last time we will hear Big Ben's chimes live at the end of this programme for some time before the bell is silent while repairs are carried out. Resetting it, you're adding in more complications. They're actually putting more wear onto the clock, so it's easier just to stop it, leave it stopped, and only use it for ceremony occasions, Remembrance Sunday, New Year. PM at 5 pm with Eddie Mayer and Valerie Singleton. Tear gas is fired at migrants. The migrants stormed that gate, they got it open, they started to go through, and then the Macedonian forces, the police force on the other side, started firing tear gas back. That caused a stampede of uh, men, women, and children back down this track, with lots of them obviously suffering from the effects of tear gas. Theresa May's big moment. <coughs> Her conference speech is interrupted by coughing <coughs> and by a prankster handing her a P45. Boris asked me to give while to our opponents flirt with a foreign policy of neutrality. <laughs> Plus, part of her conference set fell off. <coughs> so, why, <coughs> why we will never... <coughs> excuse me. She apologised to activists for the general election. I take responsibility. I led the campaign. And I am sorry. And she unveiled new policies. Shifting the balance of presumption in favour of organ donation. Two billion pounds in affordable housing. A major review of university funding and student financing. The price cap on energy bills. Carolyn Quinn will report from the conference. And the Home Secretary gives PM her first reaction to that security breach. It was very disappointing that took place. Disappointing? And Yes, very disappointing. With the BBC News on PM, Diana Speed. Hello there. It's been two years since President Trump was elected and American voters go to the polls again tomorrow. Are they sticking by their previous decision or switching? Jim Nocte reports from West Virginia. He's just bringing everything back to the people. He's not like the Democrats and the Liberals. Listen, the people that brought the president in was a silent majority. They said, listen, I'm getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. Black or white or not quite one or the other, we examine the curious case of theatre director Anthony Lennon. So, Anthony, where are your parents from, man? Eh? They're from Ireland. Which island? Ireland, Ireland. Not many black people in Ireland. So is it your mother or your father that's black? Neither. Last night on PM, this thing happened. Later on in the week. Just a hint, though. Don't get too excited. That's the forecast. This is PM. I'm Eddie Bear. We'll see you tomorrow at five. Oh, bad timing there. Hopeless. As I explained earlier, that was all my fault. In my defence, the, the, I know, the Big Ben chimes are live. They can start any time between 29 seconds to 6 and 16 seconds to 6. But there's no excuse. I crashed the bongs. It's very unprofessional. And so all this week, we're going to deliberately crash the bongs in more style. Not with me wittering on like last night. We're going to crash the bongs with something worthwhile, something with a bit of class. And so, to start us off, crashing the bongs with verve and vigour, the host of Radio 4's Poetry Please... Roger McGough. Tonight, Roger is going to crash the bongs with It's a Jungle Out There. Roger, you're very welcome in your own time. On leaving the house, you best say a prayer. Take my advice and don't travel by train. As Tarzan said to Jane, it's a jungle out there. I'm not a man who will easily scare, but I'd rather chew wasps than get on a plane. On leaving the house, you best say a prayer. Sugar's the killer and it's everywhere. You can't avoid salt, so your heart's under strain. As Tarzan said to Jane, it's a jungle out there. 
Avoid beef like the plague and the sun's blinding glare. Alcohol slowly eats away the brain. On leaving the house, you best say a prayer. When the sky turns purple, better beware. Gamma rays on the breeze and acid in the rain. As Tarzan said, oh, oh, very good, very good. Very good. Thank <laughs> you.